The Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky has partnered with Remake Learning Days across America to celebrate the many learning opportunities available throughout the country. Join us for Remake Learning Days in East Kentucky, taking root from April 22nd to May 2nd. For this activity, we will be making homemade bird feeders. You will need some items from your kit, but you will also need some items from home. From your kit, you will need your cookie cutter. Now, yours might not look exactly like this. There's a variety. You will need some bird seed. Yours is in a brown paper bag. The gelatin is in a small plastic cup. You will need a toothpick. And you will need a piece of twine. From home, you will need a glass or some other type of heat resistant bowl a spoon that you can use for stirring, a tablespoon to be able to measure. You're going to need an adult to help you with this part because you're going to need some boiling water. And this is not necessary, but you might want some nonstick cooking spray to help let the bird feeder release from the cookie cutter later. If you need to pause the video for a few minutes to gather your materials, this would be a great time to do that. Okay, now that you have all of your materials, step one is to put the gelatin into the bowl. Now, make sure you have your adult handy for this one because this is going to require the boiling water. Add two tablespoons of boiling water to the gelatin. Now use your mixing spoon to stir it up until the gelatin is fully dissolved. Make sure your water is super hot so that it will dissolve the gelatin. For the next step, begin adding your bird seed gradually and mix it until the bird seed is fully coated. You may not need all of your bird seed, or you might decide that it all needs to be part of your activity. Just keep stirring until it's fully coated and covered with the gelatin mixture. For the next step, you're going to need your cookie cutter. If you want to spray it with a nonstick spray, this is the time to do that. Use the spoon or even your hands to press the bird seed mixture into the cookie cutter. The spoon can help you get into all the corners of your cookie cutter design. Make sure you fill it all the way up to the top and press it in really well. Use the toothpick to make a hole in the top. Be sure to keep it away from the edge and go all the way through. Now the hard part's done. You let your design dry overnight, and then the next day, carefully remove it from your cookie cutter. Be gentle as you feed the twine through the hole and tie it off. Finally, hang your bird feeder outside and watch as the birds enjoy your creation. This activity is Petri dish seed germination. You will need some items from your kit and some room temperature tap water from home. From your kit, you will need the Petri dish, a filter paper, a few seeds, you won't be using the whole package, the pipette, and your tweezers. If you need to pause the video for a minute to get your materials together as well as some water, this would be a great time to do that. Okay, so step one, you're going to put the filter paper into the bottom of the Petri dish. Now your filter paper might be a little larger than a dish, so just use your finger to press it into the bottom. The next step is to lay a few of your sunflower seeds in the Petri dish. You can use your fingers or you could use your tweezers for this.
Next, use the pipette to add a couple drops of water. Put on the lid of the Petri dish. And now store it in a warm, sunny area. You can check on it from day to day. And if it's dry, add a few more drops of water with the pipette. Watch for roots to sprout. And when you see the roots, you're ready for the next activity, planting. In the last activity, you germinated sunflower seeds in a Petri dish. Now that the seeds have roots, they are seedlings. Today, we're going to work to plant those seedlings. From your kit, you will need a container of dirt, a brown peat pot, your tweezers, your petri dish with the germinated seedlings, and from home you're going to need some water. If you need to pause, this would be a great minute to go get your materials. So step number one is to take the peat pot and add some dirt. You want to fill it almost all the way up, but not too much. Then you're going to use your finger to make a hole down in the middle of the dirt. Using your tweezers, gently pick up your seedling and place it root down into the dirt. And then use your tweezers or your fingers to push dirt back around the top of the seedling. The final step is to use the pipette to add some water. And now watch your germinated seed grow. Using the other peat pot from your kit, along with some additional sunflower seeds and dirt, you can actually plant another plant. Start by putting the dirt into the peat pot. Just like before, you want to fill it almost all the way up. Use your finger to make a hole for the seed. And then take a sunflower seed with your fingers and drop it in. Cover it up. Use the dirt to cover up the seed. Add a little water using your pipette. And leave it in a warm, sunny area and watch it grow. You can add water if you check on it and it's dry. When your plants are ready to transplant, Plant your sunflowers in the ground in a sunny area in your yard. Keep watered and watch them grow. Hello, I'm Jackie Cottle, a flight commander here at the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky. This is our space station. It's a mock-up of the actual International Space Station, a structure in space where astronauts live and work. One of the things they do on the International Space Station is grow seeds to see how plant life grows in space. And just like they grow seeds on the International Space Station, of course we grow lots of seeds here on Earth. I'd like to share a story with you today about seeds. This book is called A Seed is Sleepy, and it's written by Diana Hutz Aston, illustrated by Sylvia Long. A seed is sleepy. It lies there, tucked inside its flower, on its cone, or beneath the soil, snug, still. A seed is secretive. It does not reveal itself too quickly. Most seeds sleep through a season or two, waiting for the warmer temperatures of spring. But some take their time. Ten years might pass before the bright red-orange seed of the Texas mountain laurel shows its purple blooms. A seed is fruitful. Ninety percent of the plants on earth are flowering plants. Flowering plants produce fruits fruits of all shapes and textures that keep the seeds cozy until they have found the right place to grow. A seed is naked. Yes, naked. 
Scientists call gymnosperms, seeds that aren't clothed in fruits, naked seeds. Most naked seeds hide themselves on the scales of cones until they're ready to make a dash for the ground. Who would guess that a seed as small as a freckle would grow into the world's tallest tree? Only 10% of redwood trees begin as seeds, though. Most redwood trees spring from existing trees. Seeds come in many sizes. The orchid seed is the smallest of all. There might be a million seeds in one pod. The seed of the coco de mer palm is the largest. It can weigh up to 60 pounds, 25 kilograms. A seed is adventurous. It must strike out on its own in search of a less crowded place to put down roots. A parachute of fine silky hairs can take a dandelion seed 100 miles, 160 kilometers from its parent plant. Drift seeds float on ocean currents from one shore to another. They have enough air inside to help them float and their thick protective shells keep out seawater. A seed is inventive. To find a spot to grow, a seed might leap from its pod or cling to a child's shoestring or tumble through a bear's belly. A seed hopes to land where there is plenty of sunlight, soil, and water. A seed is generous. It gives the baby plant or embryo a seed coat to keep it warm. The embryo's first meal comes from its seed leaves or cotyledons. Seeds with one seed leaf, like corn, are called monocots. Seeds with two seed leaves, like beans, are called dicots. Some seeds are ancient. Not all seeds are eager to germinate. Some have lain dormant or slept undisturbed for more than a thousand years. The oldest known seed to sprout came from an extinct date palm tree. After it was unearthed from a long ago king's mountaintop palace in Israel, a scientist planted it. Four weeks later, it sprouted. A seed is thirsty and hungry. Once a seed has shed its coat, it drinks in the rain, the dew, and yesterday's icicles. It feasts on minerals in the soil. A seed is clever. It knows to seek the sunlight to push itself up, up, up through the soil, but it must wait a while before that happens. Plants make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Inside plant leaves are cells containing chemicals that absorb sunlight. Light gives them the energy they need to turn water and carbon dioxide, a gas in the air, into food. A seed is sleepy, but only until it has found a place in the sun and it has its breakfast and a drink of water. Then a seed is awake. And that was A Seed is Sleepy by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. I hope you enjoyed the story.